Wonder Woman hunkers down with the Justice League Dark as they keep a low profile until they can figure out how and why the world certainly turned against them in this absolute power tie-in. We're going to talk about it right here in our review of Wonder Woman number 11 from DC Comics. See you in three. Let's get right to it. Wonder Woman number 11 is kind of a mess, but it has nothing to do with the quality of the comic. It's a mess because it contradicts multiple developments in the events that it ties into through Absolute Power, and the other titles with connected characters such as Shazam. How can a pretty decent title make an event worse instead of better? I'll give you the details. When last we left Wonder Woman, in issue number 10, she survived a bizarre battle against Cheetah on a deserted island because the Sovereign couldn't think of anything else to do with her, which is strange in and of itself. There are enemies... Now they're frenemies, and now there's something more with a question mark, because we're not quite sure, because they expressed love for each other, but it wasn't quite clear what kind of love they're expressing for each other. And then the issue ended with everyone leaving the island after the trio of Wonder Girls in this sort of weird slapstick comedic subplot managed to figure out how to fly the invisible jet and rescue them from the island. In Wonder Woman number 11, we begin with Wonder Woman's tie into the Absolute Power event. We catch up with the Woman of Wonder and the Justice League Dark, consisting of Detective Bobo, Madame Xanadu, Spectre, the Captain, Mary Marvel, and John Constantine. They all are just sitting around a table in the Watergate Hotel in Washington, D.C., playing a round of Go Fish. We're just a few pages in, and already something seems strangely off. You get inconsistency with the Absolute Power event and the other DC titles, which are connected to the characters that are in this issue. How did Billy Batson and Mary Marvel get to the Watergate Hotel with their powers intact when still dealing with Billy's split personality in the main Shazam book? Why is the Justice League dark in Washington, D.C. when Wonder Woman, presumably, is still public enemy number one due to the effects of the Sovereign from the previous issues? Why is this issue coming out now when Absolute Power number one and Absolute Power Task Force 7 number one both take place after this issue? And Absolute Power number one shows the downfall of this team happening in a slightly, or at least in some cases, even in a majorly different way. Boy, this comic. Suddenly, the Amazo robot designed to deal with magic users crashes through the window and systematically begins robbing each character of their magic. Wonder Woman quickly deduces that the magic stealing comes by way of physical touch. The Amazo robot is also weirdly stuttering and sputtering lines from Charles Dickens' novel, Primarily Great Expectations, indicating that there's some kind of growing neural glitch because we've seen that with the other Amazo robots that are part of Amanda Waller's army. The Charles Dickens glitch, or at least that's the way it's portrayed here, is not new. The Amazon robot has a Victorian-era quality to its speech, but it's unclear what that means or how that plays into the eventual conclusion or development of the event. Otherwise, the action is well played out and exciting, and that's what you get here. Once the robot shows up, it's basically an issue-long fight. The issue ends with Billy and Mary getting away after losing most, but not all, of their magical power as they head into the events of Absolute Power Task Force 7 number 1, and the rest of the JLD is down for the count, all the way across the board. And that's it. The team gathers, the robot shows up, they fight, and the Shazam siblings get away. The issue adds nothing to the event other than to explain how an event we already knew happened came to pass. It's not a waste of time necessarily, but you can skip it and really miss nothing. Let's talk about the positives. So what's great about Wonder Woman number 11? Tom King and Tony S. Daniel, who is the guest artist on this issue, deliver an action-packed, issue-long battle full of energy and excitement. If you're looking for a big brawl starring the Justice League Dark, this is as good as it gets, even if they lose easily and you already know the outcome. And now the negatives. What's not great about Wonder Woman number 11? It's everything that we mentioned at the very beginning of this review. There are at least two comics connected to Absolute Power that have already been released and take place after the events of this issue. So the outcome is already known. The continuity between the Captain and Mary and Shazam doesn't match their characters here. And the context of the battle, where and how one woman and her magical cohorts are defeated, doesn't exactly match what happened in the first Absolute Power issue. I'll give you an example. Mark Wade describes the defeat of characters such as Constantine in Absolute Power Number 1 by invading their minds to cause them to forget how to cast spells. So basically, they're robbing them of their magical knowledge. Here, Constantine is robbed of his magical power as though the magic was imbued in Constantine's body like it's an energy inside him. Well, you know, you got to make up your mind. Which is it? Does Constantine have magical power imbued within him that can be stripped away 
Or does he have the knowledge of arcane arts like a traditional warlock? Conventional wisdom says it's the latter, so why is Wonder Woman number 11 addressing Constantine's character differently than an absolute power number one? You not only get inconsistency between the two stories and how the plot plays out, you also get inconsistency between the characters and how they're portrayed. Let's switch gears briefly to talk about the art. Tony S. Daniel does a killer job delivering an issue-long battle with impact, excitement, energy, and engagement. If there was any concern that Tony S. Daniel stepping in for Daniel Semper it was going to be somehow a downgrade in the art quality, that concern is unfounded. He did a great job on this issue. Overall, Wonder Woman number 11 is a pretty decent issue on its own, but it's the inconsistencies between the script and how it integrates with absolute power that it just make it plain sloppy. Do you need the comic to learn essential information about absolute power? Absolutely not, because everything that happens here is already known. But it could have been essential if it was released in the right order, because at least two issues have come out before this one came out when they're supposed to take place after. And you can tell at some point Tom King and Mark Wade, who are the respective authors, just didn't talk to each other or stop talking to each other after a certain point and the sloppiness of inconsistency that you get here is the result. So, final thoughts, what do we think about Wonder Woman number 11 from DC Comics? You get a fast-paced, action-packed issue that pits the Justice League Dark, who we haven't seen in a while, against one of Amanda Waller's Amazing Robots, which is you know, the delivering around the promise. If you want a comic that's nothing but a fight from beginning to end, you'll probably like this issue. That said, this issue contributes nothing new to the Absolute Power event, and the plot is riddled with inconsistencies concerning the characters in this issue and the same characters in the other Absolute Power comics, which misses the whole point of a tie-in in the first place. Therefore, Wonder Woman number 11 deserves a 5.5 out of 10. It's a slow score because it fails in its basic purpose, which is to expand on and enhance the Absolute Power event. That's why it's here. But you know what? That's my opinion. What do you think? Give us a thumbs up, first of all, if you're a Wonder Woman fan, and let us know what do you think of the Woman of Wonder. Also, leave a comment down below with your thoughts on how you think the Absolute Power event is shaping up so far. Also, remember to click on the links in the description to read the review and buy this comic if you so choose. So, thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for the next review. 